If you're considering going to med school in Texas, then there are some unique aspects of the Texas med school application that you should know about. Uh, so that's what I'll be addressing in my video today. But first, hi, my name is Dr. Sarah Klebe, and I'm an admissions expert at BMO. So TMDSAS is the application system used if you want to apply to medical school in Texas. Uh, it's also used by dental schools and veterinary schools, but I'm going to focus on the med school application aspect. So there are some similarities between this application type and the more common uh, AMCAS, but there are some really key differences as well. So I want to highlight those for you really quickly. Um, first is your list of employment and activities. So there are a bunch of different categories for your activities, academic recognition, non-academic recognition, leadership, employment, research, uh, healthcare, community service, extracurricular, leisure, hobbies, and plan and activities, things that you uh, are going to do uh, after the application has been submitted as you continue your education. And you need to include all relevant activities from the time of your high school graduation up through uh, the present time when you're applying, uh, minus any gaps longer than three months. And you have to do something similar for the AMCAS work and activities uh, section of the application as well. Um, one of the unique aspects here is that they specifically want you to include entries under multiple headings if relevant. So if you had an employment uh, experience that was also a research opportunity, you would list that under both employment and research. So that's one unique aspect of this section. Another would be the length. <clears throat> you only get 300 precious tiny characters, including spaces, for your description of your activities. That is two to three sentences tops. So a very, very small amount of space. So you want to be really uh, ensuring that you're maximizing the amount of space that you do use through action verbs and uh, really clear, precise, and concise language that demonstrates what you got out of that experience. And to make things even a little more difficult, uh, the TMDSAS application auto-generates what's called a chronology of activities. And what this is, is sort of a summary document that is created to go along with your application and submitted to schools. And this chronology of activities only carries over the first 50 characters of any activity description. So that's 55 0, <laughs> including uh, spaces again. So uh, the schools can go through, obviously, to your longer application and see your longer descriptions, but that is not immediately presented to them in this summary document. So again, thinking through how you're going to maximize those 50 characters is really important. So the second big uh, difference between uh, TMDSAS and some of the other application types is the essays that you have to write. So you do have to write sort of a standard personal statement, similar to the AMCAS personal statement. Uh, for this one, again, the character length is different. You get 5,000 characters, uh, again, including spaces. And this personal statement essay should include your um, motivation to pursue a career in this field, what led to that decision, answering the question, why do you want to be a doctor, uh, and discussing the value of experiences that you've had preparing you to be a physician. However, there are also additional essay opportunities, uh, if you want to think of them as opportunities, hopefully you do, uh, in this application. Along with that personal statement, you get also a personal characteristics essay of uh, 2,500 characters, including spaces and this provides you the opportunity to describe some of your own personal attributes that you think would contribute to the educational experience of your class community as a member of that community. So this can include personal background, talents, skills, or experiences that make you uniquely you. And so this is meant to sort of demonstrate how you can enhance the learning experience of your classmates. Uh, and it also specifically notes inclusion of people from diverse backgrounds or people with diverse experiences. So it can be thought of as similar to a diversity essay. But wait, 
there's more. <laughs> you also have an optional essay, 2,500 characters as well, that is strongly recommended, where you can discuss any issues, experiences, or other pertinent information that just hasn't been discussed elsewhere in your application. Uh, there is a prompt for this essay, unlike the other essay op uh, options that you have. Uh, they request that you briefly discuss any unique circumstances or life experiences that are relevant to your application, which have not been previously presented. So this can be a space to discuss any particularly formative experiences you've had in your life uh, that haven't been addressed previously or that you'd like to maybe expand on, uh, or also to explain any extenuating circumstances or maybe gaps in your application, or just anything else that you really want the admissions committees to take into consideration in the review of your application. Uh, but we're not done yet. If you're applying to a dual degree program, so an MD, MD PhD program or a DO PhD program, that's osteopathic uh, doctor and PhD, uh, then you offer another essay of 5,000 characters, including spaces. And so this is to give you the opportunity to talk about your motivation for pursuing this specific kind of degree program. So you need to include uh, a discussion of your research interests and your career goals specifically as an applicant to this kind of dual degree program. Um, you also need to describe any significant re research experiences that you've had, the name of your research mentor, your contributions to any big research projects, any publications that resulted from that research. You know, any PhD program, whether it's a PhD program on its own or as part of a dual degree program, is going to be a research-based program and an immensely intense research-based program as well. So you need to be able to demonstrate that you have those research capabilities and experiences needed to succeed in such a rigorous degree. And you also need to distinguish why attaining a PhD is necessary for your own interests and goals, which is to say what a dual degree will allow you to do or pursue that you simply couldn't do by just pursuing an MD or DO degree. And then the final distinction, and one that's really important, is the residency requirement. Again, this is a, a specific application system for Texas. And the reason that it exists is that the state legislature of Texas limits the number of non-residents who can go to each medical school in Texas to only 10%. Uh, so the odds are really stacked against you if you are not a resident of the state of Texas. So at the time of your application, you'll be categorized as either a resident or non-resident uh, non and placed into an applicant pool accordingly. This will have ramifications, of course, for your tuition and things like that, but uh, it's especially uh, worth paying attention to uh, because of that very strong restriction on non-residents in Texas medical schools. So, those are just some of the key differences between TMDSAS and some of the other application forms. There are some other subtle differences, so I strongly encourage you to really thoroughly look over their application information. Uh, they have a very, very detailed application packet that you can go through that goes through all of this in a lot of detail, and we've recently posted a blog that details uh, quite a bit more of this as well. So I hope that you found this video enjoyable and helpful. If so, please Please do go ahead and like it, share it with a friend who might benefit from it. Be sure to subscribe to our channel on YouTube so you never miss out on videos like this. Follow us on Facebook and look for us on a variety of other social media platforms. If you'd like us to help you with your application, click the link that should appear either above or below this video to go to bmomedapplication.com, check out our programs and schedule a free initial consultation. We'll set you up with one of our admissions experts to answer any questions you might have and get you started on your preparation. We have programs to suit any of your needs and we're always happy to work with you to determine which plan is going to support you and your goals most effectively. As ever, thank you so very much for your time. Take good care and I'll see you next time.